We're bringing Gemini 2.0's intelligence to general-purpose robotic agents in the physical world. Optimus will be the biggest product of all time by far. Nothing will even be close. It'll be, I think it'll be 10 times bigger than the next biggest product ever made. Welcome to the Game of Investing podcast. You heard it from the man himself, Elon Musk. Yes, that's the topic today in podcast. I'm going to talk about the next multi-trillion dollar opportunity out there. If you have missed the cloud, if you had missed the e-commerce, the you know investing in Amazon, or if you had missed investing in the cloud, AWS, Google, or if you had missed the electric vehicle, like you know investing in Tesla or BYD, or if you had missed even the AI boom, like you know with Nvidia going up multifold in the last few years, then here is another opportunity that is. 10x bigger than what we have heard or seen so far. So let me start with one or two data points, right? So recently I was reading like, you know, you can see on the screen, these are robots provided by Digit, the company Digit, uh, which is, I mean, which Amazon has a stake in it, some percentage of stake, and uh, it's a subsidiary. And, uh, you know, Digit's robots are actually 750,000 robots are being implemented or you know installed by Amazon in their warehouses and you can see in the video that these digit robots are actually doing the task that humans does and even more complex tasks reaching out off the shelf you know packaging them assembling them moving it around you know doing all sort of tasks and apparently one packer robot in Amazon warehouse can actually replace 24 workers on the floor that is a huge problem proponent of replacement theory that we haven't heard about. Now, if you understand there is $60 trillion is that is the amount of amount that is being given as salary or compensation to employees overall in the world. You know, the whole job market is roughly around $60 trillion. Now, out of this $60 trillion, a replacement of 5 to 10 percentage is possible over the next course of a decade, which is substantially huge if you really look at it, right? Now, numbers speak. Now, look at uh, what Elon Musk is stating. Like, you know, he's saying there will be thousands of humanoid robots that could be working in Tesla floor workflow in 2025 and over 1 billion humanoids in by the year 2060 there will be at least 1 billion humanoids on the planet now they could be in the Mars also the way things are progressing you know things could be like humanoids can be occupying the Mars you know with the Elon's vision no but let's come to the point here so 1 billion humanoids in 2060 might be equivalent to at that point of time roughly 10 to 20 percentage of the total human population will be humanoids so you can literally see them walking along with you in the in the you know in the workplace in different areas even the houses homes uh, there are different types of robots that are being used you know humanoids being used right so let us get into the point of how each of these companies are manufacturing these and who are the key players right let me start like with a data point that you can see on the screen that China is the largest manufacturer of humanoids and close second is United States. Now, Bank of America has released a Humanoid 100 report, which you must read. I'm not going to cover in that in this episode, but you know, this that's a must read if you really understand, want to understand who are the, what is the ecosystem, who are the key players. But having said that, China leads, uh, has a market share of 60% and US approximately 40% and rest of them very minor in today's, uh, you know, based on the market share. Now, Humanoids, the uh, way I would look at the total addressable market, how did I determine the total addressable market one is a job labor market that as i spoke about 60 trillion dollars but the second part to it is the addressable market now the physical ai today we have 600 to 700 thousand manufacturing and riskier jobs that are unfulfilled because humans cannot do those tasks that'll be the first target first level of target for many of these manufacturers uh, the second is look at the screen you the addressable opportunity have calculated here right so the anticipated production cost of tesla's optimus humanoid robo is projected to in the be in the range of twenty thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars that's a cost of a humanoid as production increases the price is expected to decline over a period of time now for example if you have one billion robots that as per elon musk 2060 it could be even faster if you have one billion robots that's out there the approximate price is going to cost 
cost is going to come down by the bytes you know as we scale as the parts become cheaper i'll explain why the cost will go down but it, let's assume that the cost comes to twenty thousand dollars so twenty thousand dollars times one billion is twenty trillion dollar market now that's I popping twenty trillion dollar opportunity is what we are talking about, which is, which is much larger than any of the segments, business segments that we have seen till today, right? So that's the size of opportunity. Now there are two key drivers that is going to accelerate the adoption of humanoids. What are those two key drivers? First one is that you know it is the natural language, the generative AI and natural language. Uh, modeling which is driving the intelligence into this humanoid so the intelligence part of the humanoid is actually the artificial intelligence nothing but llms large language models and fine tuning and uh, you know uh, you know teaching and coaching these humanoids to behave like humans right it's nothing but ai now the artificial intelligence is getting cheaper and cheaper we recently knew that deep seek movement we call it right china published deep seek movement which is the deep seek llms large language models or the generative ai could be as advanced as an open ai llm but it's at a fraction of a cost so the cost of adoption of ai is coming down which could decrease the cost of humanoid and rapidly increase the proliferation of these humanoids now the second factor which is really uh, you know driving this is the reuse of parts for example you can see in the video elon has stated like you know for, they use many parts there is an overlap between humanoids parts and tesla's parts right so the cyber cab that is uh, the Autom autonomous vehicle from Tesla uh, that has been recently released has many parts that is being reused for the humanoid. So when the reusability increases, the parts becomes much more cheaper. Now, as more and more supply is coming to the arena, the cost of adoption of the humanoids comes down and the price will come down from 30k, 25k. We are seeing that Chinese, there are some robots that are priced even at 15,000 US dollars. Now, think about it. If the chores can be done at a house or the office work can be done, if a humanoid could be doing many of the warehouse tasks and activities, why not deploy them at a fraction of a cost of a human labor and at a productivity which is multifold because these humanoids don't sleep they work they can work 24 7 they don't have breaks they don't have weekends you know many of the problems that human labors cover are covered by these humanoids and there are many tasks as i said there's at least a million jobs out there which are cannot be done by human beings those can be easily targeted by these humanoids so these are going to be uh the areas which are going to drive the faster adoption and rapid proliferation of these humanoids which we can see in the next 10 years everywhere right now who are the leaders who are manufacturing when it comes to investing the the leader out in us is tesla digit digit is another company which has amazon has a stake in it and then there are many other companies but you know to lead from front is primarily uh, tesla's humanoid which is called optimus and optimus elon just confirmed you can see in the video that you know he will he, they are already going to commercializing and production in pilot production in 2025 and there could be at least a thousand humanoids active and running commercialized and being sold by the next year so which is a huge progress which is a big leap then comes china i have put on the screen all the leading players out there china is actually flooding the market with humanoids there are four to five key players out there starting with xiaomi xiaomi is a leader who's a phone manufacturer and ev manufacturer xiaomi is leading in the their the humanoids are called uh, uh, cyber one and xiaomi has a is a first one i would say to start reading the humanoids could read the emotions of human beings and respond accordingly in accordance so you know when a human being is upset or is his tone changes or her tone changes or uh, there is a voice modulation the sensors actually can sense the change in emotions and respond accordingly so it is becoming more intuitive and more interactive for that matter the intelligence is increasing as we are talking right cyber one has emotional intelligence acceptance and now others are also getting there now xiaomi is leading then there is ub tree and horizon robotics then there is robosense then there is u robo uni tree there are many and then there is a ag tech ag tech uh, no that is another company that is manufacturing so there are some seven to eight players you can see out on the screen so there are 450,000 active robotic 
enterprises which is out there in china would you believe that 400 half a million enterprises manufacturing these humanoids and in us we barely scratch the surface so this is going to be and they have already put a trillion dollars out there in registered capital and the return on investor capital is going to be multi-fold it's not one trillion we saw the addressable market is 20 20 trillion with more adoption it could be even bigger than we can you know evangelize so that is where china is standing these are the key players i put in the these companies are listed in Hong Kong. Many of them are listed in Hong Kong. And uh, I have personally invested in RoboSense and UbiTech in US, in China and Xiaomi. And uh, ADR is listed in US. Then there is um, Tesla, obviously. Optimus is the leader out here. The most important thing you need to understand is the body parts which are out there. There are many pick and shovel players like, you know, who are supplying to these OEMs. As I said in the beginning, they are the sensors, actuators. Actuators are nothing but the moving that enables a movement or the mobility is provided by these actuators. Then there is chips, right? Semiconductor chips, which acts as a brain of the robot. You can read that report, which is in detail um, from Morgan Stanley. And you can see on the screen, Bank of America has uh, you know put in a chart out there which shows all the parts and who are manufacturing and uh, so both morgan stanley and Manu bank of america reports are you know very uh, deeply covering this humanoid revolution and you could see all the players out there and you can see them on the screen you can pick and choose but let me tell you the biggest advantage uh, and biggest advantage will be for the players who imp who manufacture these and implement them in their warehouses. Amazon, right? They have digit, they might acquire digit eventually. And these robots are manufactured by Amazon. They could deploy it on the warehouses and you, you know get benefited from the return on invested capital by immensely because the return is multi-fold. They are putting this acquisition for a few billion dollars and they're getting trillion dollars of cost saving and increase productivity because e-commerce penetration is still 15 to 20 percentage in US and globally somewhat more but you know the the benefit is with more adoption of e-commerce with more and more e-commerce when it goes to 40 50 percentage of the total retail volume the Amazon's margin is gonna get hugely you know immensely benefited because the margins is going to increase by leaps and bounds today if their gross margin is 55 percentage you could be looking at the operating margin leverage playing out and the operating margin increasing by four to five hundred bips amazon get benefited so look at players who gets benefited in both sides who can who was who are the oems and who can deploy these humanoids in houses and in the warehouses right now that is the key thing you need to look at and those those two tailwinds will help you invest in a better company in china also you can see at xiaomi xiaomi has their evs manufacturing they have the uh, you know phone manufacturing they have so they will they can put these robots out there they're already doing it most of the ev production is automated by xiaomi you can see it on the screen and and Tesla as well. Tesla has multi-fold of businesses, right? You know, from a cyber truck, from a, from a car, EV production, solar panels, energy storage, all of these, you know, the charging systems, everything can be, uh, you know, leveraged up by deploying humanoids and increase the productivity and they can manufacture, manufacture more number of cars. So the EV adoption itself can increase from say 18, 20 percentage today in US to 40, 50 percentage. So more cars can be manufactured. So there are multiple tailwinds multiple industries that are going to get benefited by humanoids and there'll be more jobs you know it is just not if one job is replaced by humanoid there is a demand that's getting created out there because there is more rapid you know adoption of e-commerce more more rapid production of evs electric vehicles so there is multiple other jobs that are getting created more people required to put in these intelligence and manufacture these humanoids because humanoids today we the intelligence that goes into the humanoids is barely in the nascent stages the amount of intelligence that it can go is in the stages of ai and then agi and you know then it is asi so the artificial super intelligence is the target state which is at least two decades away so the more and more jobs are getting created in that arena where the moon repetitive uh, stereotype jobs are getting replaced uh, hard uh, human labor is getting replaced by more efficient more productive humanoid so that is a potential opportunity that we are talking about so if you're really not thinking if you're not really invested in these opportunities i would say really think deep about these the next one decade and semiconductors are not done 
because people are talking about deep seek has come so the artificial intelligence you don't need so many chips you don't need so many uh, you know blackwell chips from nvidia you don't need so much of uh, you know infrastructure data center no that's not right because if you have to run so many millions of humanoids that is actively running just like doing tasks that humans are doing the amount of intelligence that it is going to consume the amount of power it's going to consume the amount of uh, computation and data that is really going to be tweaked and fine-tuned these humanoids is exponential in nature we cannot even you know think about it how much is how much is really required at that stage so five years from now we'll be talking about the tesla's cluster the closest right data center that they have put out as nothing in front of when it comes to training uh, one million humanoids the amount of data and computation that is required could be multi-fold right and with autonomous vehicles taking charge the world is going to look very different in 2035 and 40 where there will be autonomous vehicles electric vehicles autonomous taxis humanoids that is sitting right next to you as an employee in the warehouses it could be very different so the core areas let me re wrap this episode with the core areas that you need to look at investing artificial intelligence is not dead the semiconductor chips there'll be huge demand from this point onwards so this the market has corrected a lot with these semiconductor chips it's a great investing opportunity if you think that nvidia at three trillion dollar is already covering the addressable market no the addressable market is increasing it's 20 trillion 30 trillion dollar for the human ad- as i just showed you right if they can replace the job market that is 10 percent of the job market is six trillion dollars and the jobs are only increasing the opportunity is increasing so semiconductor businesses are not done so this is a great opportunity and china is leading this pack whether it is ev autonomous vehicles humanoids robots ai china's out there equally competing with us so china has been written off china's 10 times cheaper than us in terms of market capitalization so for example a xiaomi could be as big as a trillion or three trillion dollar company in the future if they continue to execute the way they are and it could be as big as an nvidia now these are all ideas i'm discussing they they are not recommendations but we need to understand where the world is headed so semiconductors ai chips is not done data center is not done the power demand is not done nuclear is not done quantum computing could accelerate that is again another another factor that cannot drive or that could accelerate the humanoid adoption uh, because the computation states can be more faster and the humanoid manufacturers like the Xiaomi's and Tesla's and there'll be many BYD's many OEMs that will come into the existence many will start manufacturing and uh, you know each one have the de- different degrees of freedom which is the rotation the mo- motion are like you know the sensor motions are like either linear or rotatory in nature so the, the degrees of freedom is what differentiates the amount of more mobility that these humanoids can do you can read the report then comes the supplier like the sensors actuators all of those parts different parts that uh, you know these uh, robots are so for example china robosense has uh, uh, is growing 100 percentage above 100 percentage revenues because it's a small company and that's providing parts to different players oems right so they are getting advantage right then the the same parts can be used for the autonomous vehicles so autonomous vehicles are also another advantageous area if you look at you know really so there we go so there are these are the companies and the ideas you take the bank of america snapshot picture go through the companies look at the companies that can cross pollinate and get leverage operating leverage and financial leverage those are the companies you need to pick for example xiaomi right so amazon so these are the ones we discussed so that brings to the end of this episode trust this was helpful signing off sandeep anand